the agenda for today. Uh, gist, what is the gist? Back to the basis. Fermentation management, uh, what is the importance to control, to understand first uh, the fermentation? This is the magic in, in, in the process because what is the difference between a vodka and a tequila, for instance? Congeners, because we are looking for a alcohol in the vodka and tequila, whiskey, mezcal and others contain uh, very specific congeners provided by raw materials, process, processes, um, uh, the, the maturation, but the, the essence of that is fermentation. We are creating flavors in fermentation. If we are doing well at the stage, we can avoid the, the addition of external flavors. So that's the importance of fermentation. And, and obviously con congeners, name it, what kind of congeners we are looking for, what others are not uh, so good, and, and we try to avoid it. So what is the gist? It's a unicellular fungi. Uh, it's eukaryotic microorganism. It's a uh, the big difference between the gist and bacteria. It's uh, uh, the, the size, but what is an entire uh, microorganism? The other is more dependent of, of the medium. And most industrial yeast uh, in brewing, baking, wine making, distilling, bioethanol, and others, it's uh, the genus and species Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's the most common and the most known uh, uh, genus and species uh, that the human it's, uh, studied. Uh, more than 1,500 species known, uh, mostly Saccharomyces cerevisiae, but other yeast like Cluberomyces marcianus, very important. It's always present, especially in agave fermentations. Uh, Cico Saccharomyces pombe, the Cera brucellensis and Candida, this one is especially related to uh, odd flavors. So when we found some uh, uh, sulfuric acid flavors, maybe it's coming not only for the sulfur per se, but the production of some uh, flavors uh, coming from Candida. And Saccharomyces vallanus, this species, uh, it's uh, coming from, from the Champagne. So actually we are using a, a strain from Champagne here in, in, this, in this factory. Uh, geez, what, what do they like? This is a common microscope uh, picture. Uh, we can see barely uh, the morphology, if they are budding or not, if they are reproducing uh, the yeast. But we can find another uh, technology like uh, electronic microscope in, in the middle of the, of the screen that we can find scars from the budding. So they are reproducing and they are creating more cells. And the other uh, picture in the, in the right uh, side, we are uh, finding more detail in the, in the gist wall. What is the importance of the gist wall? Uh, it's not only uh, like a skin, a lot of interactions, a lot of metabolisms happening uh, in, the, in the skin wall. So we are going to talk about uh, a little bit the, the, some interactions and, and the metabolism. Uh, the compounds. Uh, 35 to 60 percent are proteins inside the cell, 20 to 40 percent polysaccharides, lipids, uh, phospholipids and triglycerides, nucleus acids, and inorganic phosphor, uh, potassium, uh, sulfur, and others. Vitamins are very important because uh, the raw material that we are using here normally contains a lot of, of the essential nutrients that the, the yeast uh, requires to, to complete the fermentation. But we are finding new studies that the, the agave, for instance, doesn't contain a lot of, of uh, very macro and micronutrients to complete the, the fermentation. And this is in dry weight because 75% uh, is water in the, in the yeast uh, cell. This is uh, a table of uh, yeast requirements. Uh, a lot of differences between some authors here, but we can find in, in bold, zinc, manganese, magnesium, like uh, the, the, the most important micronutrients that the yeast uh, requires to complete the fermentation, and some values here. So zinc is very important, and we are finding a, a lack of this nutrient in our, in our uh, must. I mean, uh, coming from, from the raw material, but uh, now with uh, younger agaves, uh, let's say four years old or, or maybe less than that, we, we didn't find uh, zinc in, in those kind of, of uh, quality agaves. Uh, manganese, because it's, it's very important to complete 
the interaction, the pathway from sugar to ethanol, we require manganese. And magnesium, uh, this is a micronutrient that uh, the yeast cell requires to avoid stress. We are going to talk about stress, uh, some stress of factors. So it's very important to, to keep the cell happy. What is the characteristics? Uh, we have here the minimum resolvable uh, by human AI, 0.2 milliliter, my mil, milliliter mm, sorry. <laughs> so this is uh, like uh, thick of, of uh, hair, uh, in, uh, the, this is the size. And we can find yeast and bacteria. This is a big difference, five to 10 micrometers and bacteria two to, to five. So it's important to define this because it's not really easy to assess in a microscope, like the first one in the, in the first slide, uh, to find uh, how much of contamination we can have in a fermentation. So we need different uh, procedures to uh, get the, the amount of, of bacteria that we have in, in fermentation. Uh, a very important thing here is a gist sample of 10 grams only has a contact area of 10 uh, square meters. So we, we need to, to uh, keep in mind that the volumetric and, and the sphere uh, cell is giving contact with the media. So by that, it's having sugars, it's transforming in, into alcohols and congeners. If we have a, a yeast that is uh, uh, flocculating, it's going uh, in, in, at, the, at the bottom of the, of the fermenter, it's uh, not possible to have that interaction. So maybe we, can, we can't complete uh, in a good way the, the fermentation. Life cycle, uh, cerevice, Saccharomyces cerevisiae reproduction is by budding, so it's clones. Uh, each new cell uh, leaves a scar. We can see here in this image the, the scar of every budding. And the, the budding rate is between nine to 30. It depends if we are in a, uh, fermentation process or in uh, respiration, it, uh, uh, using uh, oxygen. Uh, the yeast reaches the limit of reproduction, enter and senescence, and then dies, as, as the other microorganisms. Low temperatures can delay some stages, but uh, at the same time can give us a different profile in, in our spirit. So it's very important to, to know the, the temperature in the, ferm in the fermentation stage. Uh, life cycle, again, uh, we can see here as, as humans, uh, the, we have in, in the yeast, lag phase, acceleration phase, when it's budding and when it's reproducing, then the log phase, the logarithmic. It's very important, this phase, because growing cells uh, produce more than uh, alcohol 33 times faster than no growing cells. If we are using a yeast cell, let's say, in the stationary phase, we are not producing, it's, it's a entire uh, cell, put in that way. So we need to understand our, our process again, just to see how it's generating the alcohol, not only alcohol, the other congeners. So we have this table, key stressors to control during, during fermentation. We have the technical uh, things, choice the yeast, not all the yeast uh, do it the same, because uh, some yeasts are related to uh, baking, for instance, some other yeasts are wild yeast or native yeast that we, we can find in, in the factory. Sorry. <clears throat> and uh, the, the, second, the second question is if we are using fermentation or for propagation, the, the stage of uh, respiration. If we are using oxygen for that. What is the process? If we, are, if we have masonry ovens, if we have meals, uh, uh, stainless steel, uh, etc. The quality of backset, this is more related uh, to a production of whiskey, because it's common in whiskey to use the back set uh, to the machine and liquefaction uh, stage. Not in the tequila industry, maybe uh, some factories are using a little bit of a back set, vinaces, and in, in diffuser, for instance. <clears throat> Physical aspect, very important to control and to understand the performance of the yeast when we change the temperature. If we have control temperature in, in, in our fermenters, of, if we don't have, what is our, our uh, manage of that? The water or osmotic pressure, very important. It's not the same if we are formulating agave juice 
at uh, nine bricks, 12 bricks, 17 bricks. The, the osmotic pressure is different. And even if we are using agave juice from a masonry oven or uh, with uh, some amount of, of, of uh, solids uh, in comparison with uh, agave juice from a diffuser. So the, the, the osmotic pressure is different and the time uh, of fermentation is different and maybe the congeners as well. Oxygen, uh, if we are mixing using a propel, what is the management in, in the fermentation? So other factors like biochemical and microbiological, uh, the, the, this, this presentation is 42 slides uh, we can share with you. We are only, uh, just for, for a matter of time, you are only presenting 20, but uh, we, you can have more in the, in the standard uh, presentation. Know your gist. It's, it's, a, it's a recommendation that we, we do in, in our visits and in our technical support because uh, we need to assess what is the morphology, what is the stage of the, of the gist. If we find uh, this morphology with the budding is, is growing, but we can, uh, we can find another solid, and we can have maybe a different morphology in the cell, uh, maybe more like, uh, I, I don't know, not circular, not spheric. So maybe we are having another species in, in our fermentation. We are not in a sterilized process, that's, uh, uh, that's true, but we need to, to look the, the most standardized way to produce the same liquid, the same uh, uh, product at the end of the day. So in the right side of the, of the screen, we can have with another uh, microscope, a different way to assess the, the contamination. If we find with a dye, uh, it's, it's a specific procedure, but we, we can find here bacteria and bacteria can just chase the, the cell gist and just uh, go to the bottom. And, and, and this is not a really a good practice in, in, in your factory. Talking about organic acids. Organic acids are very present because contamination. Uh, lactic acid bacteria are uh, producing, are, are generating these organic acids. Uh, and they are using sugar to make this organic acid instead of alcohol. So uh, here we are speaking about uh, not only performance, but yield. Yield and, 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 and kilograms of agave uh, per liter of, of tequila. Um, yeah, to maintain the pH, it's another impact uh, in, in, in terms of uh, not only yield, because the, the bacteria is using the, the sugar to produce the different things, but uh, there are uh, acid, acidifying in the, the media, and the yeast needs to use carbons to uh, balance the, the pH inside the, the, the cell. And this is something that we are uh, using a carbohydrate not to produce alcohol. So you follow me in that? So it's, it's not only the, the bigger impact is not only by, by using sugars for, from the bacteria, but other impacts are the other congeners and other products that they are generating. Uh, we, these values we are going to, to see in, in, in the next slides. One, one uh, topic here is bacteria is reproducing every 20 minutes and uh, yeast uh, is budding or is reproducing from two to, f uh, to four hours. So grows uh, more, more rapid than, than yeast. So key aspects, I, I just skipped some slides here, but uh, key aspects from uh, the production of congeners. Again, raw material is very important. The mature of the agave, uh, the region, highlands, lowlands, etc. Obviously, the yeast is not the same uh, uh, profile coming from a yeast uh, using a, for, for champagne and a yeast used for, for maybe another wine or, or drum and others. Uh, the metabolism is different. Uh, the fermentation conditions, if we are aerating, using agitation, controlling pH, temperature, etc., cetera, and, and the, the contamination, uh, just to, to say some. Distillation process is very important. It's not the same. Uh, pot steel, in, in copper pot steels, columns, etc. And finally, the aging. So here, we, we can have here some uh, pathways of the metabolism of the yeast. I will try to, to explain a little bit of this, but uh, we, can have, we can see here sugars coming 
uh, especially glucose, but we, we can just reduce uh, fructose here. If the, uh, bless you, if, if the cell, if the yeast feels uh, the environment as a, as a threat, uh, it produces glycerol just because it's, it's a mechanism of defense. So the glycerol is like uh, yeah, the, the cover of, of the yeast, of the skin. Uh, if not, the, the glycerol pathway is not that uh, open and the, the pathway is more to pyruvate, to acetyl coenzyme A and fatty acids. Uh, we can have esters here or here and we can have acetic acid. It's not uh, that good for the profile. But the, the best pathway that we are uh, looking for is the acetaldehyde, ethanol, and finally the ethanol in, in the beverage. Sometimes we have a very high levels of acetaldehyde. So that can indicate not only raw material, but maybe something happened in, in, in fermentation that just break this last part of the, of the pathway and we, we have not a complete reaction uh, from sugar to ethanol. So uh, that's, that's important to know. And in the other side, if we don't provide the, some nutritional sources like amino acids, uh, the yeast is not happy. Uh, low nitrogen, nitrogen is, is very is essential for, for the fermentation. So maybe it's, it's again not happy. A heat shock, uh, normally a temperature between 30 to 35, it's a range in the steel spirits uh, that the, the yeast is very happy with that range of, of temperature. Uh, low glucose is another stress factor. Maybe we don't have uh, complete sugars because uh, the inulin, you know, the inulin is a polymer uh, coming from the agave. Maybe if the hydrolysis is not well done, you, you don't have the, the sufficient amount of, of uh, glucose, fructose, and, and the yeast is uh, um, uh, having a, a stress here. Uh, another stress for the cell wall, maybe uh, another factors that they are impacting the, the, the yield and the performance. So maybe another like calcium uh, can, can stress the, the yeast as well. So putting some values here, uh, inhibitors, uh, we, we are showing some that are very common in, in our fermentations. Uh, daily uh, problems that these guys are, are uh, facing day to day. So lactic acid, more than 0.8% uh, dry weight, um, and acetic acid can uh, just inhibite the, the, the fermentation. Um, in, in, in the States especially, they are doing a lot of tests to avoid this uh, organic acids just because there is, there is an issue in, in the yield and the, the performance. Other onions, other ions like uh, aluminum, more than 30 uh, parts per million are inhibiting uh, the fermentation as well. Why we can have aluminum in, in your fermentation? It's not common to, to find it in, in agave, but maybe some uh, agronomic practices are not so well so maybe we can find aluminum in, in, your, in your must. Ethanol, more than 23%, is not common in the tequila industry, can inhibit uh, the, the yeast. Car carbohydrates, sugars, more than 38%. Again, it's, it's not a, a value that we are finding in our, in our industry, but can inhibit as well. Fusel oils, mycotoxins, more in the whiskey industry, because they are coming in the raw material, in the, in the grain and corn, for instance. Temperature more than 37, 40 Celsius. Uh, I know in, in May it's very difficult. It's very easy to, to have this uh, range of temperature, uh, especially in some regions in, Mex in Mexico. So this is, uh, again, inhibiting uh, the, the, the performance of the yeast. Sodium, more than 500 parts per million, and sulfites. Some producers are using uh, uh, aluminum sulfite to provide the nitrogen in fermentation. So that is not, not the good, especially because the sulfur. Congeners, uh, this is the flavor and aroma compounds and, and, and that those have a name. Higher alcohols, we are trying to avoid higher alcohols, but uh, the, the, the reality is we need it because some of them, uh, uh, an amount uh, 
it's, it's given by the norm, uh, give us some very special flavors, uh, very characteristics to the, to, the, to the spirit. So one propanol, uh, amyl alcohol, isoamyl alcohol, isobutanol, just to name some. Uh, carboxylic acids, those flavors, those aromas, uh, cheese and soap and others are coming from this kind of, of compounds. And, and they are generated by the yeast. So this is something that we can control if we know our fermentation, if we just uh, uh, have a, the, the right procedures. Uh, esters, they are very famous in, in, our, in our drinks because we are looking for fruity, pineapple flavors, uh, banana, so we need to name it. In, in the CG analysis, in, in the norm, the tequila norm, we don't have a lot of this listed. We only have two, ethyl acetate and lactic acetate. So, we need to understand more uh, of the flavors, where, where they're coming from. Uh, furans and lactons, this is more related to the cooking step and the maturation, but we need to, we need to understand, again, uh, the, the amount of this. Phenols, uh, more related to the barrel, but this is very important. If you are not doing the, the right thing or the procedures, some producers are adding vanillin, as you mentioned uh, before. Vanillin, eugenol, and others, and this is something that if, the, if you control, again, your process, you, you, you can avoid that, that uh, external flavors. Sulfur compounds, we try to avoid this because uh, this is uh, related to, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so it's very clear. And carbonic uh, compounds like acetaldehyde, the acetyl, are, the diacetyl is an uh, odd flavor in, in, in beers. In our industry, it's not that common, but this one, yes. Uh, the, the green apple, it's very, very common in some tequila, so maybe it's a good uh, flavor in some cases. In, in other cases, it's a, it's a signal of a not complete fermentation, so we need to take that in account. Uh, again, yeast metabolism, uh, just to remember uh, the pathway from sugar to ethanol. Uh, this is happening, but uh, at the same time, we have a lot of other pathways here. And this is a matter to control a little bit the stressors, the media, uh, the, 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 the things that we, we mentioned before, but uh, we, we need to know that we are not producing ethanol. We are producing a spirit. So if we keep, again, of procedures, um, very well controlled. It's more option to have a, a very uh, unique, very distinct profile and be uh, re the reproducibility uh, or, or the consistency. It's, uh, it's something important for that. So this is a factory of flavors. Uh, we need to know what kind of flavors we are looking for. Just some examples. Uh, sorry for the Spanish in the right side of the of the of this uh, slide, but just using. Sea molasses and cane juice. This is a different raw material. Uh, three strains, and we can find very different profiles. So again, the, the yeast use the raw material and the process and produce very different things. And we can control some of them, but the, naturally it's a, it's a big difference if we change the raw material. What if we use exactly the same raw material but only changing the temperature. We have here two strains, 30 Celsius, 38, and you can find very different uh, amount of some of them. For instance, uh, banana or isom isomil acetate. It's, it's a very different situation when we use uh, a low temperature against a, a high temperature. So uh, again, we need to understand what is the profile and what is the, the, the um, parameters uh, that we are uh, using in our, in our process. Um, <clears throat> sorry, just about nutrition. If we use um, amino acids or organic nutrition, it's more related to a very uh, healthy cell yeast. Uh, if you use sulfate, maybe we can have a rebound of H2S. This is not good for us. So we need to understand uh, what kind of, of uh, sources like nitrogen, minerals, and metals we are using, and what others are present in the raw material. 
again, just a, a, a case of a study. This is exactly the same fermentation, same raw material, same yeast, just having sufficient nitrogen and a lack of nitrogen. And you can see this is dramatic uh, result, but you can see here a very different profile kinetics uh, in, in, in yeast uh, population in uh, alcohol. Alcohol, is, this is an ANCOM uh, study, so interferes the the production of CO2 and, and related, it is related to alcohol. So again, this is just an example, it's in the lab scale, but uh, it gives us uh, an idea of, of the impact of the nitrogen and, uh, in this case. Finally, just a kinetics, uh, just to keep in mind, uh, we are providing sugars in, in our fermentation. And this is the kinetics of the consumption of sugars not below zero, this is, this is not right, but uh, maybe we, we have a, a little bit of amount of sugars, fermentable sugars here, but we can find this, this kinetics for amino acids. Uh, the yeast is using very fast in, in the beginning and then just release because some yeast cells are dying and they're releasing uh, amino acids from, from, the, from the cell. And the ammonium, uh, some producers are using urea. We, we really don't recommend urea because the uh, ethyl carbamate and, and, and other compounds and they're carcinogenic, so it's, it's not a good idea. But uh, uh, nitrogen uh, in a good source, uh, inorganic, is required for, for the yeast. So it, it, that use uh, the, the ammonium very fast and then it's just flat. So just to have an idea of, of the kinetics. And I don't know, I'm in time. <laughs> and that's it. I don't know if you have any questions. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because a lot of organic nutrients are, are, are available. I mean, uh, this is more cell yeast, uh, um, like uh, walls and, and very specific parts of the yeast, maybe brewer's yeast. Uh, and, and yes, this is available. We, we have a, as a company, but the other companies have another, another uh, nutrients and are, are organic, are, let's say natural and we just remove uh, sulfur compounds and others just to have the, the more uh, convenient uh, products. Are you, are you always looking for a complete fermentation? For the That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, normally in, in the industry is very interested because, uh, yes, the, the agave price, uh, the last uh, 10 years, I don't know, it's uh, very, very high. Since 2017. Since when 2017. Yeah, if you're not complete, if you're not able to complete fermentation, your, your cost per liter is tremendous. It's very high, yeah. So, so it's like an efficiency. Yeah, it's an efficiency. Yeah, yeah, but you can, you can be efficient and get the profile that you, you are desired. In a lot of these highly industrial diffuser places, they'll use an excessive amount of diammonium phosphate. Yeah. Uh, to push a fermentation process. Okay. I don't know, three to four days is not yeah. normal in a place like here, right? Depending yeah, yeah. On the temperature and weather and season. Yes. But it can be as quick as 18 hours in yes. some places. Um, and so I was wondering if you could talk about, like, what does, what does an excessive amount of, say, diammonium phosphate okay. do to the final product? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Normally, you, you, can, you can have a very neutral uh, alcohol because if you accelerate a, a lot of reactions, uh, the pathway is more related to ethanol, but the other pathway is, is like, uh, yes, you are avoiding that, that, those. Okay. So you have a very neutral alcohol, but uh, very good yield, but not the congener profile. Maybe it's just for, uh, for another kind of, of uh, spirits like uh, for uh, blends or, or RTDs or, or whatever. But yes, yes we, we can find this in the industry. More related to the future, to be honest, but uh, yeah, 18, 24 hours of fermentation. Yeah. Knowing that heat plays a huge impact and obviously the weather changes throughout the year, yeah. what would you say is one of the like, biggest differences that you do from cold season versus like warm season? A lot. Uh, the, the most important contamination. Mm -hmm. In warm season, 
it's really easy to have a higher values of contamination. Contamination sometimes is, is good okay. because a, a small amount of organic acids with alcohol make esters. So when it's hot, there's more contamination. That's a big problem. It's, it's more easy to have contamination. It, it, it's not always related to more uh, warmest uh, contaminated. No, but it, it's a more uh, easier. Yes. Easier. To have. So, so with that said, what do you do to mitigate? Starting, uh, let's say, if you start at uh, 31 Celsius in, in cold season, maybe they can start at 29 in a warm season, 28 in the fermentation. And, and even the other uh, part is maybe con uh, adjusting sugars. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can just uh, adjust uh, a little bit less sugars in, in a warm uh, season, in a warmer season than the cold, colder so you season. The adding commercial yeast, you check fermentation in here, and then Wild yeast carry through the end. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me, let me, if I got well. Yes, you, you, you have a lot of uh, microorganisms in your fermenter. Mm -hmm. That's true because uh, our, our process is not st sterile. So we are conducting the profile by adding a commercial yeast. But at the same time, you can find others. And like uh, we, we, we said in, in the first or second slide, uh, Cluberomyces, other Saccharomyces, and, and other genus and species. Uh, the thing is that this is the way of, of uh, obtaining the most consistent profile by adding some amount. Some producers are adding way more just to reduce time and just to, let's say, to avoid another competition. Uh, this is something that you can play. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's, uh, it's better if you Put your, your strain and just leave uh, another to, uh, to have uh, interactions there. So, yes, uh, it, well, you can change your profile by adding more yeast. It, that's uh, that's uh, the thing. Or, or going back. Yeah. As a, as a Western influential, I always wonder if there's like, they're talking about the profile of the recipe or the profile of the recipe. And it's yeah. Certain, I think maybe it's the most important. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I will you say that. I would say if you have a, a pay uh, graph, uh, maybe 30 of, the pro of your profile is coming from the raw material, mm -hmm. maybe uh, 30, 40 percent from fermentation, no not bien. only the yeast or fermentation process, mm -hmm. and the other uh, the, uh, the distillation uh, stage because it's not the same, uh, pot steel, copper, column. So yeah, but it, that's importance of fermentation. Yeah, that's it's a big chunk of. of I have never heard that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, and afterwards, the barrel, right? Because you have a Blanco and it's a different profile with the barrel. It's an amazing, amazing work, yeah. Contamination or other production? Yeah, advantages, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. Uh, maybe because you can clean better uh, some, some of the, those vessels, you can control, uh, let's say, the open vessels can uh, get more contamination from the air and something like that. But uh, yes, I, I, I see a lot of open vessels with a really nice fermentation. So it depends of your controls and other parameters. Uh, some use uh, good uh, wooden vessels, and some others use uh, stainless steels. And when you put in, in the pot steel and obtain the, the steel spirit, maybe you can find a really nice, even better in, in, the, in stainless steel than the, the wooded steel. So. It depends of, of, of the other factors, yeah. Do yeah. you think it's possible to create like the flavors that are coming from additives in, do you think you could create a, a profile without adding that again? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, actually, we are working in, in two pathways, again. Uh, natural, conventional yeast right. and GMO yeast. Right. GMO is not allowed in our market, to be honest, but in the States, you, are, you have, uh, uh, sour BC yeast for, for uh, bitterness uh, beers. It's really nice product and, and people are really happy uh, having that, that product. Um, and we are working in, in just to, let, let me go back a little bit. Okay. okay. Uh, with GMO yeast, you can just uh, modify some pathways like glycerol. So you, you make the yeast more profitable or uh, more yield. 
and, and you can have more in this, in this case for bioethanol. For steel spirits, it's different. So there are a lot of studies doing more vanilin specifically with a GMO yeast. That's another part of the story. In, in our story, if we don't have, uh, if we are not able to use a GMO yeast, we can control some parameters just to produce uh, some esters, some uh, long chain esters, uh, do they can eat 12 carbons, 14 carbons, to have uh, uh, some, some flavors like you are saying, and to avoid adding at the end of the, uh, sorry? Your, your favorite in the pathways. Yes, yes, it, it's possible. It's not easy, but uh, it, it's the best way to obtain some flavors instead of just uh, produce a neutral alcohol and then just add a uh, flavor. Are you blending different yeasts to do that, or are you actually modifying? Not really. We are, we are doing some fermentations uh, separately and, and then blending the, the result. Because one yeast, uh, for instance, uh, it's able to produce more esters than other. Uh, other yeast is more able to produce uh, acetaldehyde. So maybe you, you need uh, a little bit of this and, and that. So that when you blend, them and bring them okay. yes. yes, it's the best way because if you put a co-inoculum, it's very difficult to control in the fermentation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 